God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad. I'm the right one with some. All I'm showing you is there's a greater Jerusalem. That's all I'm saying. There's a heavenly Jerusalem. There's a spiritual Jerusalem. That Jerusalem is where you find the interaction. Because there is where the saints are. There is where the angels are. There is where the city of God is. The mountain of God hosts the city of God. The city of God is where the infrastructure is. There is the place that you receive impartation. There is the place where you, every calling that I've got, I got it in Zion. Because that's where the city is. You have to go to the capital city to get his resources. You don't get to call from from the outside. You understand? You understand? That's how men is called. Men is called in Zion, not by other men. By the time I call someone, I'm an authorized representative because I've been to Zion. So because I've been there, I carry it with me everywhere I go. Hey, God is lifting you. Bob. But if you ain't been there, you're not qualified to lift anybody. This is how we get apostles, prophets, evangelists, past teachers. That's how I got my next grace that said, hey, now your job is to go raise prophets, apostles, and spiritual men. I was in Zion when he gave me to do that. Amen. Alicia, like, help him. Life is a test when you pass, yeah. School of Meditation, Washington, D.C., May 31st, June 1st. You are not going to want to miss this. There is a portion that God has left for every one of his children inside of meditation. We see this from the life of our father Abraham all the way through the life of our beautiful Lord Jesus, even the saints after, which means that there's a portion of interaction with the Lord Jesus that we can have through meditation. There's a portion of fellowship that we have with sweet Holy Spirit through meditation. There's a portion of interacting with the Father and even receiving answers to prayer through meditation. He says through the Word of God that before you call I will answer, which means that when meditation is done properly, prayers aren't only placed in your mouth, but they're placed in your heart. That's why David said, let the meditations of my heart be acceptable. We're going to be debunking all of the new age garbage that every child of God could move in this vein of interacting with him. Like John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard a vision. What do you think he was doing? Meditating. If you know what I know, School of Meditation, May 31st, June 1st. It was too deep. Life is a test where you pass. God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that. I'ma spend one gift too bad. I'm the right one with some lights. Son, hold me up. I do not care. I remember care. one morning, something detrimental happened to us. And the next morning, I was going through like the, 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 the what I call the stages of grievance. And one of them is anger, and I felt it the next morning. I was angry. I woke up, and I was pissed. I thought I was fine the night before. I didn't cry a little bit. And then the next morning, I woke up, and I was angry. And my husband, thank God for my husband, he said, you have to go and pray now. Get up and go pray. And I went, and I was like, I just, ah, what you mean I can't pray? I felt bad that I felt anger. And he was like, no, you have to go pray now. And I was like, okay. And I get up, and I go pray, and I'm telling you. I bared my heart before the Lord. And it was almost like being vulnerable about that pain, about the anger, about my feelings before the Lord brought us into another place of intimacy. And my tears, like the Lord, became as something that spoke before him. It says that his tears became blood. Why? Because his blood speaks a better word. So your tears that comes down out of these places of pain becomes begins to speak and they bottle it and then they pour it onto the pages of the books in heaven and they become a written epistle before the Lord Lord teach me how to pray so don't hold back your tears don't hold back your feelings 
You pray, and then it becomes painful, and you pray more earnestly before the Lord. Lord, this temptation is too much for me. I thought I could handle it. I thought I can do this in my own righteousness, but I am failing. Help me, Lord. sing, I like to talk my gifts together. They call rap. Raising my hands up in class. Life is a test we pass. School of Meditation, Washington, D.C., May 31st, June 1st. You are not going to want to miss this. There is a portion that God has left for every one of his children inside of meditation. We see this from the life of our father Abraham all the way through the life of our beautiful Lord Jesus, even the saints after, which means that there's a portion of interaction with the Lord Jesus that we can have through meditation. There's a portion of fellowship that we have with sweet Holy Spirit through meditation. There's a portion of interacting with the Father and even receiving answers to prayer through meditation. He says through the Word of God that before you call, I will answer, which means that when meditation is done properly, prayers aren't only placed in your mouth, but they're placed in your heart. That's why David said, let the meditations of my heart be acceptable. We're going to be debunking all of the new age garbage that every child of God could move in this vein of interacting with him. Like John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard a vision. What do you think he was doing? Meditating. If you know what I know, School of Meditation, May 31st, June 1st. Raising my hands up in Life is a test when you pass. God knows when I get that, I'm going to flip that. I'm going to spend one gift too bad. I'm the right one with some light sun. Hold me up, I do not care. I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together. He, re he was revealed to, or the measure of light that Paul was revealed to, had a physical expression on him. It blinded him. We know it because when Jesus returns, he will fully vent the full manifestation of his light, and it will destroy everyone who hates him. So they think he's coming back with sword, like, charge! Kind of. It's going to be light that's released. And when he releases light, it deals with those who hate him. That's what the word of God says is that who at his return will destroy the enemy with the brilliance of his coming. That's what it says. By the brilliance of his coming, he will destroy the Find that for me, please. Find that for me. That way they know we're not making it up, prophet. <laughs> The lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The lawless one won't be destroyed with a weapon, he will be destroyed with light. Yeesh! Whom the lawless one who will be destroyed at the brightness of his coming. Yes. A lot of people think Satan was cast out with weapons, he was cast out with light. Yes. Yes. Just teaching you, teaching you the, the range of light. Light brings life just as much as it brings death. That's remember the word is light, right? It's double edged. It's a double edge. Sharper than Sharper than any two edged sword is a division. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> you see? Because the word is light. That light is a sword. Why? He would destroy them at the brightness of his coming. They got it right. They saw a sword. They just didn't know it was light. Ah, hey, you understand? This is me. Me. I am killing him. Me. I am a spirit. I like to talk my gifts together. They call rap. Raising my hands up in class. Life is a test where you pass. Yeah. Yeah. When you pass on, will you not? When you pass on what you got? When you pass on, does it stop? I remember one morning something detrimental happened to us and the next morning I was going through like the the, the, the the what I call the stages of grievance and one of them was anger and I felt it the next morning I was angry I woke up and I was pissed I thought I was fine the night before I even cried a little bit and then the next morning I woke up and I was angry and my husband thank God for my husband he said you have to go and pray now get up and go pray and I went and I was like, I just, ah, what you mean I can't pray? I felt bad that I felt anger. And he was like, no, you have to go pray now. And I was like, okay. And I get up and I go pray. And I'm telling you, I bared my heart before the Lord. And it was almost like being vulnerable about that pain about the anger, about my feelings before the Lord brought us into another place of intimacy. And my tears, like the Lord, became 
as something that spoke before him. It says that his tears became blood. Why? Because his blood speaks a better word. So your tears that comes down out of these places of pain becomes begins to speak and they bottle it and then they pour it onto the pages of the books in heaven and they become a written epistle before the Lord. Lord, teach me how to pray. So don't hold back your tears. Don't hold back your feelings. You pray and then it becomes painful and you pray more earnestly before the Lord. Lord, this temptation is too much for me. I thought I could handle it. I thought I can do this in my own righteousness, but I am failing. Help me, Lord. Raising my hands up in class. Life is a test when you pass. Yeah. Yeah. When you pass on, will you not? When you pass on, what you got? When you pass on, does it stop? And when you pass on, does it start? Yeah. Uh, those are the questions I'm asking. We live in the present, we live to the future, but we always refer to the past tense. Yeah. If I go make a million today, I wonder if that would be the reason why I got a big smile on my face. But I know yeah. that it will never last. I know that it will be a couple of days. What is it, prophet? Jesus is more than willing to forgive every man of his sin. But what it does to the soul can cost you deeply in the life to come. Not salvation, but it can cost you by the process that you may get put through. The process by what it puts you through can be damaging. So when we talk about fornication, listen guys, stop fornicating. Hear me. You have to stop it. I'm not looking at any one person. So when I'm looking, I'm not speaking to any person. But you who are doing what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Remember I said every man who has a life of prayer has a certain smell upon them. Every fornicator has a smell on them also. Every sin has a certain smell attached to it. Most people think drunkards smell like alcohol. They smell like sulfur. They smell like ash from hell. Everyone, everything has a certain scent to it. I learned that early on when I was serving the Lord Jesus and I began to cast devils out of people and I could smell the hell coming out of them. It would come out of their pores. That's how I could see their sin. This sin is from this, and that's how I learned, okay, this is the spirit I cast out. Not by somebody filling out a checklist. You need God for everything you're doing. <laughs> I'm serious, too. I'm serious. I don't say that with any malice. I don't say that. I'm serious. I'm serious. They, I understand what they did. They had to create a way so everybody could be involved, but there's a better way. What I'm telling you, sin is bad. It is so bad. I be joking like, sin is bad. But if you know me and you really know me, I'm telling you this. It's a bad thing. It's a bad thing. So when we talk about <coughs> murderers, fornicators, adulterers. Now he says fornicators and adulterers, but both require acts, but they're not the same thing. So you think just because you're not doing it in the flesh doesn't mean, no, you're, uh, you're under that umbrella also. So you got to stop doing it in your heart also. Right? So that's how we do it. We then turn. The way we do it is we say, oh man, I'm not a part of that group. No, you're part of that group because you do it in your heart. And the moment you try to detach yourself from that group, your heart is already wicked. If you're not doing that, you say, oh, that's not me. You should have said, Lord, help us. I'm not doing that. But my heart is, Lord, help us. If you don't say that, you have already missed it. If you're not a fornicator, but you didn't say any inside, Lord, help us all. You've already missed it. If you didn't say on the inside, Lord Jesus, please help us all. Please help my brothers because we need to be together. You've already missed it.
God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun Hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together They call rap Raising my hands up in class Life is a test we pass God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun Hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together They call rap Raising my hands up in class Life is a test we pass Yeah, yeah Pass on, will you not? When you pass on what you got? When you pass on, does it stop? Or when you pass on, does it start? Yeah, uh, those are the questions I'm asking. We live in the present, we look to the future, but we always refer to the past. And yeah, if I go make a milli today, I wonder if that would be the reason why I got a big smile on my face. But I know yeah. that it will never last. I know that it will be a couple of days. Cause what is it profit a man to gain the whole world as he's walking his path and turns around and realize that he just went the wrong way? God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad. I'm the right one with some. All I'm showing you is there's a greater Jerusalem. That's all I'm saying. There's a heavenly Jerusalem. There's a spiritual Jerusalem. That Jerusalem is where you find the interaction. Because there is where the saints are. There is where the angels are. There is where the city of God is. The mountain of God hosts the city of God. The city of God is where the infrastructure is. There is the place that you receive the impartation. There is the place where you, every calling that I've got, I got it in Zion. Because that's where the city is. You have to go to the capital city to get its resources. You don't get to call from from the outside. You understand? You understand? That's how men is called. Men is called in Zion, not by other men. By the time I call someone, I'm an authorized representative because I've been to Zion. So because I've been there, I carry it with me everywhere I go. Hey, God is lifting you. Bob. But if you ain't been there, you're not qualified to lift anybody. This is how we get apostles, prophets, evangelists, past teachers. That's how I got my next grace and said, hey, now your job is to go raise prophets, apostles, and spiritual men. I was in Zion when he gave me to do that. Amen. Yeah, Excellent. Alicia, like, help him. <laughs> Life is a test when you pass, yeah. School of Meditation, Washington, D.C., May 31st, June 1st. You are not going to want to miss this. There is a portion that God has left for every one of his children inside of meditation. We see this from the life of our father Abraham all the way through the life of our beautiful Lord Jesus, even the saints after, which means that there's a portion of interaction with the Lord Jesus that we can have through meditation. There's a portion of fellowship that we have with sweet Holy Spirit through meditation. There's a portion of interacting with the Father and even receiving answers to prayer through meditation. He says through the Word of God that before you call, I will answer, which means that when meditation is done properly, prayers aren't only placed in your mouth, but they're placed in your heart. That's why David said, let the meditations of my heart be acceptable. We're going to be debunking all of the new age garbage that every child of God could move in this vein of interacting with him. Like John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. 
and I heard a vision. What do you think he was doing? Meditating. If you know what I know, School of Meditation, May 31st, June 1st. Raising my hands on class. Life is a test when you pass. God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that. I'ma spend one gift too bad. I'm the right one with some light sun. Hold me up, I do not care. I remember care. I one morning, like something detrimental happened to us. And the next morning, I was going through like the, 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 the what I call the stages of grievance. And one of them is anger, and I felt it the next morning. I was angry. I woke up, and I was pissed. I thought I was fine the night before. I even cried a little bit. And then the next morning, I woke up, and I was angry. And my husband, thank God for my husband, he said, you have to go and pray now. Get up and go pray. And I went, and I was like, I just, ah, what you mean I can't pray? I felt bad that I felt anger. And he was like, no, you have to go pray now. And I was like, okay. I get up, and I go pray, and I'm telling you. I bared my heart before the Lord. And it was almost like being vulnerable about that pain, about the anger, about my feelings before the Lord brought us into another place of intimacy. And my tears, like the Lord, became as something that spoke before him. It says that his tears became blood. Why? Because his blood speaks a better word. So your tears that comes down out of these places of pain becomes begins to speak and they bind it and then they pour it onto the pages of the books in heaven and they become a written epistle before the Lord Lord teach me how to pray so don't hold back your tears don't hold back your feelings you pray and then it becomes painful and you pray more earnestly before the Lord. Lord, this temptation is too much for me. I thought I could handle it. I thought I can do this in my own righteousness, but I am failing. Help me, Lord. sing, I like to talk my gifts together. They call rap. Raising my hands up in class. Life is a test where you pass. God knows when I get School of Meditation, Washington, D.C., May 31st, June 1st, you are not going to want to miss this. There is a portion that God has left for every one of his children inside of meditation. We see this from the life of our father Abraham all the way through the life of our beautiful Lord Jesus, even the saints after, which means that there's a portion of interaction with the Lord Jesus that we can have through meditation. There's a portion of fellowship that we have with sweet Holy Spirit through meditation. There's a portion of interacting with the Father and even receiving answers to prayer through meditation. He says through the Word of God that before you call, I will answer, which means that when meditation is done properly, prayers aren't only placed in your mouth, but they're placed in your heart. That's why David said, let the meditations of my heart be acceptable. We're going to be debunking all of the new age garbage that every child of God could move in this vein of interacting with him. Like John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard a vision. What do you think he was doing? Meditating. If you know what I know, school of meditation, May 31st, June 1st. Raising my hands up in class. Life is a test when you pass. God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that. I'ma spend one gift too bad. I'm the right one with some light sun. Hold me up, I do not care. I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together. He, re he was revealed to, or the measure of light that Paul was revealed to, had a physical expression on him. It blinded him. We know it because when Jesus returns, he will fully vent the full manifestation of his light, and it will destroy everyone who hates him. So they think he's coming back with swords like, charge! Kind of. It's going to be light that's released. And when he releases light, it deals with those who hate him. That's what the Word of God says, is that who at his return will destroy the enemy with the brilliance of his coming. That's what it says. By the brilliance of his coming, he will destroy the... Find that for me, please. Find that for me. That way they know we're not making it up, prophet. <laughs> The lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The lawless one won't be destroyed with a weapon. He will be destroyed with light. Yeesh! Whom the lawless one who will be destroyed at the brightness of his coming. Yes. A lot of people think Satan was cast out with weapons. He was cast out with light. Yes. Yes. Just teaching you, teaching you the, the range of life. Light brings life just as much as it brings death. 
That's remember the word is light, right? It's double edge. It's a double edge. Sharper than Sharper than any two edged sword to the division. Hey! Hey! hey. <laughs> <laughs> <Yo>. <laughs> You see? Because the word is light. That light is a sport. Why? He would destroy them at the brightness of his coming. They got it right. They saw a sport. They just didn't know it was light. Ah, <laughs> you understand? This is me. Me. I am killing him. <laughs> me. I am a spirit. I like to talk my gifts together. They call rap. Raising my hands up in class. Life is a test where you pass. Yeah. Yeah. Pass on, will you not? When you pass on what you got? When you pass on, does it stop? And when you pass on, I remember stop? one morning something detrimental happened to us, and the next morning I was going through like the the the, the, the what I call the stages of grievance, and one of them is anger, and I felt it the next morning. I was angry. I woke up and I was pissed. I thought I was fine the night before. I even cried a little bit, and then the next morning I woke up and I was angry, and my husband. Husband, thank God for my husband. He said, you have to go and pray now. Get up and go pray. And I went and I was like, I just, ah, what you mean I can't pray? I felt bad that I felt anger. He was like, no, you have to go pray now. And I was like, okay. I get up and I go pray. And I'm telling you, I bared my heart before the Lord. And it was almost like being vulnerable about that pain about the anger, about my feelings before the Lord brought us into another place of intimacy. And my tears, like the Lord, became as something that spoke before him. It says that his tears became blood. Why? Because his blood speaks a better word. So your tears that comes down out of these places of pain becomes begins to speak and they bottle it and then they pour it onto the pages of the books in heaven and they become a written epistle before the Lord. Lord, teach me how to pray. So don't hold back your tears. Don't hold back your feelings. You pray, and then it becomes painful, and you pray more earnestly before the Lord. Lord, this temptation is too much for me. I thought I could handle it. I thought I can do this in my own righteousness, but I am failing. Help me, Lord. Raising my hands up in class. Life is a test where you pass. Yeah, yeah. Will you pass or will you not? Will you pass on what you got? When you pass on, does it stop? And when you pass on, does it start? Yeah. Those are the questions I'm asking. We live in the present, we live to the future, but we always refer to the past tense. Yeah. If I go make a million today, I wonder if that would be the reason why I got a big smile on my face. But I know yeah. that it would never last. I know that it would be a couple of days. What is it profit? Jesus is more than willing to forgive every man of his sin. But what it does to the soul can cost you deeply in the life to come. Not salvation, but it can cost you by the process that you may get put through. The process by what it puts you through can be damaging. So when we talk about fornication, listen guys, stop fornicating. Hear me. You have to stop it. I'm not looking at any one person. So when I'm looking, I'm not speaking to any person. But you who are doing what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Remember I said every man who has a life of prayer has a certain smell upon them. Every fornicator has a smell on them also. Every sin has a certain smell attached to it. Most people think drunkards smell like alcohol. They smell like sulfur. They smell like ash from hell. Everyone, everything has a certain scent to it. I learned that early on when I was serving the Lord Jesus and I began to cast devils out of people and I could smell the hell coming out of them. It would come out of their pores. That's how I could see their sin. This sin is from this, and that's how I learned, okay, this is the spirit I cast out. Not by somebody filling out a checklist. You need God for everything you're doing. I'm serious, too. I'm serious. I don't say that with any malice. I don't say that. I'm serious. I'm serious. They, I understand what they did. They had to create a way so everybody could be involved, but there's a better way. What I'm telling you, sin is bad. It is so bad. I be joking like, sin is bad. But if you know me and you really know me, I'm telling you, it's, it's a bad thing. It's a bad thing. So when we talk about... <coughs> 
murderers, fornicators, adulterers. Now he says fornicators and adulterers, but both require acts, but they're not the same thing. So you think just because you're not doing it in the flesh doesn't mean no, you're uh, you're under that umbrella also. So you got to stop doing it in your heart also, right? So that's how we do it. We then turn. The way we do it is we say, oh man, I'm not a part of that group. No, you're part of that group because you do it in your heart. And the moment you try to detach yourself from that group, your heart is already wicked. If you're not doing that, you say, oh, that's not me. You should have said, Lord, help us. I'm not doing that. But my heart is, Lord, help us. If you don't say that, you've already missed it. If you're not a fornicator, but you didn't say any inside, Lord, help us all. You've already missed it. If you didn't say on the inside, Lord Jesus, please help us all. Please help my brothers because we need to be together. You've already missed it. God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad. I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care. I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap. I'm raising my hands up in class, life is a test we pass. God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad. I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care. I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap. I'm raising my hands up in class, life is a test we pass. Yeah, yeah. Pass on, will you not? Will you pass on what you got? When you pass on, does it stop? Or when you pass on, does it start? Yeah, uh, those are the questions I'm asking. We live in the present, we look to the future, but we always refer to the past. And yeah, if I go make a million today, I wonder if that would be the reason why I got a big smile on my face. But I know yeah. that it will never last, I know that it will be a couple of days. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world as he's walking his path and turns around and realize that he just went the wrong way? God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad. I'm the right one with some. All I'm showing you is there's a greater Jerusalem. That's all I'm saying. There's a heavenly Jerusalem. There's a spiritual Jerusalem. That Jerusalem is where you find the interaction. Because there is where the saints are. There is where the angels are. There is where the city of God is. The mountain of God hosts the city of God. The city of God is where the infrastructure is. There is the place that you receive impartation. There is the place where you, every calling that I've got, I got it in Zion. Because that's where the city is. You have to go to the capital city to get its resources. You don't get the call from from the outside. You understand? You understand? That's how men is called. Men is called in Zion, not by other men. By the time I call someone, I'm an authorized representative because I've been to Zion. So because I've been there, I carry it with me everywhere I go. Hey, God is lifting you. Bob. But if you ain't been there, you're not qualified to lift anybody. This is how we get apostles, prophets, evangelists, past teachers. That's how I got my next grace that said, hey, now your job is to go raise prophets, apostles, and spiritual men. I was in Zion when he gave me to do that. Amen. Yeah, At least you like, help him. Life is a test when you pass. Yeah.
School of Meditation, Washington, D.C., May 31st, June 1st. You are not going to want to miss this. There is a portion that God has left for every one of his children inside of meditation. We see this from the life of our father Abraham all the way through the life of our beautiful Lord Jesus, even the saints after, which means that there's a portion of interaction with the Lord Jesus that we can have through meditation. There's a portion of fellowship that we have with sweet Holy Spirit through meditation. There's a portion of interacting with the Father and even receiving answers to prayer through meditation. He says through the Word of God that before you call, I will answer, which means that when meditation is done properly, prayers aren't only placed in your mouth, but they're placed in your heart. That's why David said, let the meditations of my heart be acceptable. We're going to be debunking all of the new age garbage that every child of God could move in this vein of interacting with him. Like John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard a vision. What do you think he was doing? Meditating. If you know what I know, school of meditation, May 31st, June 1st. Raising my hands up class. Life is a test where you pass. God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that. I'ma spend one gift too bad. I'm the right one with some lights. Son, hold me up. I do not care. I remember care. one morning, something detrimental happened to us. And the next morning, I was going through like the, 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 the what I call the stages of grievance. And one of them is anger, and I felt it the next morning. I was angry. I woke up, and I was pissed. I thought I was fine the night before. I didn't cry a little bit. And then the next morning, I woke up, and I was angry. And my husband, thank God for my husband, he said, you have to go and pray now. Get up and go pray. And I went, and I was like, I just, ah, what you mean I can't pray? I felt bad that I felt anger. And he was like, no, you have to go pray now. And I was like, okay. I get up, and I go pray, and I'm telling you. I bared my heart before the Lord. And it was almost like being vulnerable about that pain, about the anger, about my feelings before the Lord brought us into another place of intimacy. And my tears, like the Lord, became as something that spoke before him. It says that his tears became blood. Why? Because his blood speaks a better word. So your tears that comes down out of these places of pain becomes begins to speak and they bottle it and then they pour it onto the pages of the books in heaven and they become a written epistle before the Lord. Lord, teach me how to pray. So don't hold back your tears. Don't hold back your feelings. You pray, and then it becomes painful, and you pray more earnestly before the Lord. Lord, this temptation is too much for me. I thought I could handle it. I thought I can do this in my own righteousness, but I am failing. Help me, Lord. I sing. I like to talk my gifts together. They call rap. Raising my hands up in class. Life is a test where you pass. God knows when I get there. School of Meditation, Washington, D.C. May 31st, June 1st. You are not going to want to miss this. There is a portion that God has has left for every one of his children inside of meditation. We see this from the life of our father Abraham all the way through the life of our beautiful Lord Jesus, even the saints after, which means that there's a portion of interaction with the Lord Jesus. Perfect. Hey, thank you guys for your patience. I know that 830 was more like 945, but we just practicing being like the Lord. He says he'll be there. Is that better? Okay. Hey, well, let's let's start this just so we can make sure. If you can hear us well, put a thumbs up in the chat. But thank you for your patience is what I was trying to say. We appreciate your patience. We were taking care of some small housekeeping things. Let me see a thumbs up. We can shout out, shout you out, show you some love. God is good. Jeremiah, <laughs> bless you, man of God. Alshonda, Alicia, Ty, J.O., Brando, Eve, Cindy. I like it. You see, that's the pace we're looking for. Rome, Kevin, Steve Gray, Dr. Adrian, I love you. M.G. Marcus Green, bless you, Evangelist. Jenna Levinson, bless you, woman of God. Emmy J., love you, woman of God. Alshonda said we're on time. It's 845. See? Y'all need to get into the spirit. Pat Ritchie, love you. Quentin, I love you, my son. Hey, mommy. John Baptiste, bless you, man of God. 
Kevin Nanga. We see the merchandise right in the right hand bottom. Yeah, go ahead and put your orders in. Prayers of a Simple Man Volume One. It'll be uh, out for, out out soon. So go ahead and get your orders for that. <coughs> Shameless plug. <coughs> Elder Antoine, call. The, yeah, I'm good. The prophetic psalmist. Brandon Peter, love you, man of God. Hey, ew. Hey, my Sean, I love you. <clears throat> Diamond, love you. Yeah, we'll work on getting a, um, a link created. That way people can just purchase it online. Then you can put the link in the chat. Then it'd just be way easier that way. I know we lost a few people in the process while while the trailer was playing, but I imagine as we get started, as kind of we get rolling, people to check back in. But that's that splat. Yeah, but share share it so people can receive that way they can be blessed with us. That um that you can be a partaker on what God would do. Also, remember when you share, when you like, when you comment, it helps get it out to other people so they can receive also, and it also aids you because if someone and we know that it's the case where people receive deliverance, people receive breakthrough, people receive healing, people receive direction, clarity, all of the sorts. When they receive these things, you become a partaker of it also, meaning you get to reap in those same rewards. So I always use that reference that the ones who stayed back and did not go to battle, they reaped in the same rewards by watching the camp. And so you reaping the same rewards by liking and by sharing and all of those things that help us. Amen. He said the hat is on. Pe uh, the hat is on point. It's just, it's small, small. <laughs> Was really on point. Y'all can't see it. The Sean Wetherspoon ninety seven, but that's another story. Oh, okay. <laughs> we didn't have the camera angles right tonight. <laughs> okay. Trayvon, bless you, man of God. Bless you, man of God. Yeah, for all everyone interested in book, you you uh, get with Janika and they'll they'll work you through it. Now, like I said, thank you for your patience. Thank you for taking your time and just sticking around with us. But tonight we're going to be talking about doors and windows, and we won't be long. Maybe, maybe not. We're just kind of um. Footwork look like you stomped out of Smurf. <laughs> the footwork has to be right. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And we ain't got but a few things we could have. And, you know. But, no, um, I, th I do thank you guys for your patience. I thank you guys. Yeah. What's wrong? It's, it's doing what it's supposed to do. It's giving what it has supposed to give. Yeah. Hey, Amen. <laughs> Hey man, it was getting me right before. That's what took so long. So thank, thank you guys. But this is what I want to say. As we endeavor to continue to talk concerning all of these spiritual things, right? As God gives us grace to move into these things, the reason these things are important is because some of these things won't aid in salvation. Some of these things will aid in salvation. However, what's important is that you're made aware. Because when you're made aware, you now have what we call a signpost to know what to look for. So it's like, if I say, hey, when you go down the street, you're gonna look for the house that has a truck in the front yard, but all of the tires are flat. You now have a landmark that you're looking for, what we call a signpost. You have a reference point that gives you an indication that you're in the right vicinity or you're in the right area. And when we teach these spiritual things, a lot of times we're giving you reference points and indications to where God is taking you or where you've already been. A lot of times someone could pass the house that they're looking for and it isn't until someone says, no, you're looking for the house that has the truck with four flat tires in the driveway. And then you'll say, man, I passed that house the entire time. I knew I was close, but I wasn't certain. Right. And so these spiritual things are very much that way where we're sharing things that make you aware that there's a signpost that God is releasing to you to show you that, hey, this is the this is the direction walk in it 
this is the way you're close. Amen. But what I don't want us to do is fall in love with the sign because that's what happens where we kind of get. I don't even know what the word is, but we kind of start folk. We start losing sight of the main thing being the main thing. The main thing will always be his son, which is the Lord Jesus. That is always the case, even though we're talking about all these different things. The main thing will always be the main thing. And that main thing is his son. Amen. Mm -hmm. I don't want us to lose sight of that. The main thing is his son. And the reason being, we were having a good discussion yesterday. It was more like Felicia was doing the the questions with everyone. We were having some question and answer, just having a good time. But I realized in pointing people back to what the main thing is, you have to always guide people back to what's truly important. None of these things matter without his son, right? And not that anyone's trying to do anything without his son, but what can happen is it's very much a risk that people run because we become people that are very system oriented and very process driven. So rather than God giving us a directive, even the things that I share with you were things that God gave me. So it wasn't that I had a system or a process that I was following. What I had was a person that was leading me. You see the difference? Now, as I share about that person who has led me and who has guided me, we realize that there are some signposts of things that we can look for. However, those things, we're not to be married to those things. Okay? We're not to be married to them in such a way that now all we think about is, oh, if this happens, that means this. Or if this happens, that means this. And then you become married to the process and not truly married to the one who gives all those things. All of these things are about his son. All of these things are about us with the shepherd. Hey, bless you, Kalima. She says it's been a while since she called her live. Good evening. Good evening to you also. So all of these things are about his shepherd. So even as we talk about doors and windows tonight, right, we're going to start with John. But the most important thing you need to know about a door and a window is that he is the door and we come in and out through him. Okay, so even though we're going to talk about how men of God can be doors and all of these other spiritual dynamics that are true and exist. The only thing you need to know is that he is the good shepherd and we enter in through him. Does that make sense? He's the good shepherd and we enter in through him. If any man comes in any other way, he counts it as being a thief and a robber. Amen. So we're looking for his son and we're looking to enter in through his way. Does that make sense? Okay, I want to make sure we're establishing that because <clears throat> what happens is it's easy to move ahead of God. And when I say move ahead of God, we become married to a process or to a system. And now we no longer consider God. We just think, hey, if I do this, it will get this will get me this. Or if I do this, this will get me this. And the fact is, God is only giving what he's willing to give regardless of what you do. So I've always said this to people that you can earn nothing from God. That's hard for people to process because we live in a very worker like mentality that, oh, if I do this, he'll give me this. And if I do this, he'll give me this. And if I do this, he'll give me that. All of those things can be true. But with God, everything is based upon his goodness because there's nothing you can earn from him. Yes. There's nothing you can earn from him, which is why he paid for it through his son. So even though your righteousness is righteousness, it means nothing because it can earn nothing because the only thing that worked and the only thing that could suffice was his son. And the only reason his son could suffice is because it was himself. Right. So even when you hear me preach the gospel, you'll always hear me say that God presented himself to himself so he could satisfy himself. That's the way God taught me the gospel. So I didn't know it that all oh, Jesus did like this. The way the Lord taught me God presented himself to himself so he could satisfy himself himself because there was nothing that could do that is why there was the blood of bulls there was the blood of goats there was the blood of the lamb there was the blood of pigeons turtle doves heifers all of these things but nothing could suffice and the reason being god was only willing to present himself to himself through his son and when he received that he was satisfied and upon him being satisfied then he takes a seat and now he has rest does that make sense Okay. Hey, man, YouTube, if you're with me, put a thumbs up in the chat. I want to make sure we're all kind of moving down the stream together. Amen. Amen. Mm. 
Let me see some thumbs up and then we'll keep moving. Perfect. So, hey, DeAndre, bless you, man. I got Hey, Lissette. So, yes, what I was saying was that God presented himself to himself. The way he presented himself was that he clothed himself in flesh, meaning he took on human form. That is why you will often hear me reference him as the God man. The reason I reference him as the God man, because he's fully God, yet he was fully man, which is what makes him the God man. That's why we reference him as our Lord Jesus. There's plenty of lords and there's plenty of Jesus, but there's only one Lord Jesus. Yes. That makes sense? We talked about it before, right? Jesus right around the corner right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So there's plenty of Jesuses, bar Jesus, Jesus, all those things. But there's only one Lord Jesus. Yeah. Because he's the God fully clothed in man and man fully clothed in God. That's what makes him the God man. Amen? Amen. Excellent. So these things are important, like I was saying, because <clears throat> I want you to understand that you can earn nothing from God. Now, that can a lot of times step on a lot of people's toes and how they view their interactions with God. But I'm telling you, his son was the only thing that would satisfy him. His son was the only thing that would satisfy him. There are things that we do that can be pleasing to him. But satisfaction only comes through his son, yes. not through you and not through me because we're insufficient. Yes. That's why he was willing to wipe out an entire people because what they could present was not satisfying. Mm -hmm. All right. Yet for you and I, he finds satisfaction through his son. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. I want to make sure we understand it because I end up telling people a lot of times, I end up having this discussion with people that, hey, you can't earn anything from God. Because people, there's a, and there's a lot of striving that ends up taking place where you're doing these things because you want to earn something from God. Mm -hmm. But God likes people who do things simply because they love him. Mm -hmm. Right? God is interested in the one who just genuinely loves him. So I tell people all the time, if you're going to do something, it needs to be rooted and birthed out of the place of sincerity before God. I sincerely pray because I sincerely love him. I don't pray to punch a clock. So I don't rise up early in the morning because it's like, hey, if I punch the clock, this earns me this. You've already missed it. Right. That's kind of like when people are attacked with sexual dreams and all of these things at the night, but they're doing warfare. Right. They think their prayer earned them a covering. So they say, if I do this prayer before I go to bed, Rabbi Shaka, I bind, I lose sleep, I just cover my dream. They do all of this. They're thinking that what they're saying is earning them something. But I don't have to earn it because God already gave it to me. So once I understand the positioning, that I position myself as a son in my father's house, what's his is mine. And what he gives me, I freely receive. Yes. Right. That's what we talked about in the school of light, where we said the condition of the church is that we disciple people where we want them to pay for what is free. But what is free or what is a cost to it? We want to get it for free. So we condition people in our church culture in our American society and even in society as a whole within the nations of the earth, or nations of the world where what God has freely given, we want people to pay for. That's righteousness. God gave that through his son. You can't earn that. That's why you're no different from the Muslim, from the Buddhist, from the Jew, from the Hindu. All of them fast. All of them pray. All of them keep themselves from fornicating. All of them obtain their vessels and keep themselves. So it makes you no different, which means righteousness isn't fulfilled through the law. It's only fulfilled through a person. And we only receive that righteousness through him. Right. Now, obviously, I posted that meme the other day talking about Uncle James. Right. Uncle James come running all the party and all the fun. <laughs> Uncle James like, no, you're not righteous unless you do righteous, right? So I get it. Calm down, every The righteous police just calm down because you know they're clipping it up right now. He said you can't. No, calm down. Relax. The moment, I'm telling you now, the moment you feel uptight, the moment someone starts speaking about righteousness and that you can't do anything to be righteous, you, I'm showing you someone who's a striver. And your striving is not an issue 
but the issue can affect you because what God has given you, you're now trying to work for. And God's like, you silly rabbit. You, si you silly rabbit. That was the young man that was inside of the house when you talk about the rich, not the rich young ruler, excuse me, but when the young man left and he said, give me my inheritance. He least it, he, at least he understood what God had for him because it's a reference of us inside of our father's house. At least he understood that this is my portion. You see what I'm saying? The brother had no clue of what his portion was. Father, I've been serving you all this time and you haven't given me anything. He's striving. He was doing it because he wanted to earn something. You see? Where sons have a position of rest inside of their father's house. So sons aid and build and come alongside. Servants just simply serve. Now I'm a servant, right? So we're not going to throw away the word servant. But my servitude is as a son, not as a servant. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm a bond servant. Even though I can be free, I choose to serve. You see? I, I have the capacity to be free, yet I choose to serve. Why? Because he's my great master. <laughs> it makes you bitter before you know it. Yes, absolutely. So you'll see that a lot of times when you start talking about righteousness, excuse me, can only be fulfilled through a man and not through the law. People immediately start. The scripture said, I know what the scripture say. I know what the scripture say, but I also know what it's like to be a son in my father's house. And I'm telling you, he doesn't make me work for what is mine. The son understood that. Give me my inheritance. Right. And then even when he spoils it, the father still has enough left for him. So God has provisions for our failures already. As the good shepherd, God has already made provisions for our downfall. God has already made provisions for our own stupidity. God has already made provisions for our shortcomings. Because if he's predestinated me because he foreknew me, that means through all of my stupidity and through all of my failures, through all my shortcomings, he's devised a way to make sure I never leave his hands. Does that make sense? He devised a way already that I would never leave his hand. But that only happens when you come through the door, which is him. Yes. Amen. Yes. Excellent. So let's start. There. Let's start with John 10. It's a long chapter or it's a long passage when you're reading it. But let's start reading that, John. And then um, let's just kind of see where we go. Let's see if we can finish it before this. Uh, let's see what happens by the time the timer goes out. John 10, Psalm verse one. Most assuredly, I say to you. He who he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. So it says he who does not enter the sheepfold and he comes in any other way. He's a thief and a robber. Now he's going to go on because he's having a conversation in parable form. Now, when Jesus spoke in parables, a lot of times people confuse this through their carnality to think that Jesus is trying to make things understandable. Jesus was actually trying to do the exact opposite. He was speaking so people would not understand. The prophets all spoke about that. Hey, God would blind their ears so they cannot, or excuse me, blind their eyes so they cannot see, and he would dull their ears so they cannot hear. That has always been God's way. Because if he doesn't dull their ears and he doesn't blind their eyes, there's no need for Jesus to go on the cross. Because then there's no need of a savior because they will believe him there. You see? Yes. So even in all of that, them wanting to crucify him was because God had already shut their ears off. God had already shut their eyes off. God had already blinded their hearts. And so we'll see as he continues to talk within this passage, he goes on to tell them, oh, they didn't understand the parable. So then he continued to expound upon it. But anytime you look at the Lord Jesus, he would take masses of people and speak to them one way so they don't understand. But he would speak to his disciples plainly so they could understand. So plain speech is always for the disciples. Plain speech is always for those who are close proximity to him. God will always bring the mysteries close for those who serve him and walk with him. Everybody was walking with him, but that was just so they can get something. Bread. There goes that striving again. They says, Master, where have you been? They said that. And then he would arise a great while before day. He would go into prayer and then he would desert himself. And it said that they were searching for him, looking for him. 
And then when they finally found him, they said, Master, where did you go? We were seeking for you. And he says, you only sought me because you were looking for bread. So God understands if you're striving already. He already knows your heart and he already knows your condition. I'm telling you now it's better to just love him genuinely. You can't do anything to earn his love, so you might as well just love him. Amen? Amen. Excellent. Go ahead, go ahead, and we'll keep going. Because I'll, I'll keep, <laughs> I'll just keep going. We'll never get through John. Go ahead. <laughs> but he who enters by the door is the, sheep her, is, is the shepherd of the sheep. Mm -hmm. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep. By name. Which verse are you reading? King James or New King James? New King James. Okay. I want to get the other one with you. That's why I just make sure so I don't read the same one. Where you at? Uh, verse 3. Okay. Thank you. And leads, and, and leads them out. Mm hmm And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him. For they do not know the voice of a stranger. Now, someone asked me this question yesterday. They said, well, how do I know if I'm growing in this and if I'm hearing God correctly and these different dynamics, right? And I told him, I said, well, you learn the voice of the shepherd by being amongst the sheep. So in the Song of Songs, it says that she says, where is my beloved? Where can I find him? And he says, oh, fairest and oh, loving beloved, if you do not know, follow in the way of the flock. That's what Song of Song says. He who follows in the way of the flock will always be able to find the shepherd. The shepherd is always found amongst his people, not on your own. The lone ranger is one out of a thousand. So a lot of people try to, I've said it before, a lot of people try to make themselves lone rangers. God didn't wire them that way. It's literally one out of a thousand people that he just kind of makes that way. And he does that for a specific purpose with them. It's kind of like that meme I posted earlier today when I said, um, when extroverted me makes plans for introverted me and extroverted me and uh, introverted me shows up. <laughs> All right. I said, listen, hey, invite me to your stuff. I'm not coming, but I want to be invited. <laughs> you understand? God just God takes certain people. He just wires them that way. That's what it is. But in all honesty, he is found amongst the flock, not by yourself, because that's where safety is. That's where you don't run the risk of being picked off on your loans. Amen? Amen. All right. Go ahead. Keep reading, John. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, mm -hmm. but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Mm -hmm. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then Jesus said to them again. You got to be pretty slow. To not understand what that just said. Oh, I want you. <laughs> I want you to, to realize. To, did we all understand what he just said prior to that? We all got it. Now, after we got more understanding, now understanding the Son of God, understanding the work He's done. But it was pretty. It was pretty straightforward. He's the good shepherd. No one, if anyone comes in any other way, they're a thief and a robber. You can only follow His voice. Yet they didn't even get that. So I want you to know that you also have the risk of not getting things. So when you hear people, oh, that's not right. That's not right. This, perhaps you don't know. Mm. Peter, James, John, the people who walk with him were missing things. What makes you think you know everything? Mm. Yes. If he had to pull them aside and explain to him how he is the good shepherd and how he is the door, what we consider very fundamental, I promise you there's things that you're just not fully 100% on. You just need to wait on God. That's for all of our exposed ministry people out there. Everybody want to cut up the clips and all of that stuff, right? I can guarantee you there's just a certain dimension that you're just unaware with. And because of that, if you just take time to allow God to explain what he's releasing to you, you'd be surprised what you can receive. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. All right, go ahead, John. Let's pick up. Then Jesus said to them again, Most surely I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. So when Jesus says, verily, verily, 
He's like, listen, guys. <laughs> That's what that is. That's not like I'm reaffirming what I'm saying to you. He's like, guys, I'm, I'm going to say this a second time so you can get it. I'm the good shepherd is what he's saying. So he says, then Jesus said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. So when we talk about doors and windows, who is the door? Jesus. Right. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. This is verse nine. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. So he is the door and the door is where we find salvation. Yes. So you find salvation. You enter into the dimension of salvation by coming in through the door and the door is his son. Yes. Doors. <clears throat> as we start to open this up, when you look at doors within the scriptures, doors represent transitions. Doors represent access points and doors represents portals. These are what doors represent. Doors are represents access points. Doors represents portals. Doors represent places of transition. So every time you see a door, there's a place of transition. Every time you see a door, it's an access point. Every time you see a door, it's a portal. Now, people don't like those kind of words, but all portal means is a transport system from one dimension to the next. So they would have a big hard time when the scripture says that you've been translated from out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Translated it to be moved through the spirit. That's why when it talked about Philip, how he was translated, how the spirit moved him from one place to the next. So when it said that you have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, you too have been put through a transport system. You just weren't aware of it. Amen. Amen. There's more spiritual activity than what most people are aware of because we just do things haphazard like, oh, yes, I gave my life to God today. You know, I've already told you that don't work that way. You have been translated from the kingdom of light into the kingdom of kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. You've been moved from one state of existence to the next. And the door is how it happens. That door is his son. But if you're not aware, you don't realize that God is moving you into a place. Amen. So it says that. Then Jesus said to them, verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. So what he said in the beginning, he says, if anyone comes in any other way, they're considered what? A thief and a robber. Now, then he goes on to say, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal, kill and destroy. I am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. You listen to the scripture and people have been blaming the devil for this for years. The, 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 you know, the devil, he come to steal, kill and destroy. He didn't say Satan came to steal, kill and destroy. He says Satan goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He said right here, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. He's what is he stealing? He's trying to access something illegally. That's why he said, if any man comes in any other way, he's a thief and he is a robber. But we take that and we've been describing that to Satan for years. Oh, well, you know, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. No, he says, if any man comes and tries to access this dimension any other way, because remember, the spiritual world can be accessed through different access points separate from God, but only through the door of Christ is salvation found. You see? But there's windows and there's other access points that man can have into the spiritual world. There's other access points that man can gain into the spiritual realm. That's why when you look at the wizards, when you look at the witches, the magicians, the astrologers, the, so the soothsayers, the sorcerers, all of these different things, all of them have access into the spiritual world. All of them have access into the spiritual world. How do you think they're gaining the information? Because the information is present there. That's why when it says that Paul and them were journeying and there was a young woman who had a spirit of divination. And she says, these men have come to us to proclaim the way of the most high. She had information. Mm -hmm. She got that from somewhere. Yet he turned around and cast a spirit from out of her. And then she was made free. Yes, yes. So the information she had, she wasn't getting it through the door. So if you don't come in through the door, you're a thief and a robber. But he didn't say Satan is the thief who comes to kill, steal and destroy. I'm just challenging that religious doctrine that 
you just take something you just received. Like, yeah, that sounds about right. He never said that. He said the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, not Satan. Obviously, we understand these are facets that he functions with also, right? These are facets that he functions with also, but I'm just showing you what it's saying right here. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. And then he likens it to what? The thief comes not but for to kill, steal, and destroy. It's right there. All that came before me are thieves and robbers. He didn't say the one who came before me. If he would have said the one who came trying to be like, if he would have said something else to liken it, we could have said, okay, I get what he said. No, he says, all that came before me are thieves and are robbers. The thief come to kill, steal, and destroy. He's likening every person who's tried to come before him. That's why he would speak of the Pharisees and the Sadducees in such a stark way where he says that do not call any man father. And he wasn't saying don't call anybody father. He's saying do not call these specific guys. These ones right here, do not call them father because they're not qualified to be called a father. Because he says they hang heavy burdens on you, yet they do not help you. A father will always be there to help lift you. A father will never hang a burden on you and not lift you. You understand? Even the burden that God put on the son, he sent the angels to help him and give him strength. Lord, would you let this cup pass from me if there be any other way? And he cried and his tears were like blood. And the angels came and ministered unto him. He received strength to go on to Calvary. Mm. You understand? Yes. Amen. The only time he was forsaken was on the cross. Because then at that moment, all sin had been placed upon him. Yes. All sin had been placed upon him. But prior to that, him and God were walking hand in hand. That's why he would arise a great while before day and he would find fellowship with his father. But then the moment he interacts with the high priest, the moment he's before Pontius Pilate, the moment he with all of those things, sin is now placed upon him. When sin is placed upon him, God can no longer look at him. That's why I'm telling you, you can't earn anything, anything from God. Remember last week we talked about being inside of the name. If you're not inside the name, God can't talk to you. If you're not inside the name, God can't hear you. Because it says he does not look upon sin. He can listen and talk to whom he chooses, but his nature is that he does not look upon it. That's when we talk about understanding his nature and understanding his ways. Most people can tell you about what's written. They can't tell you about him. You see? And those are, those are two stark contrasts. Those are two stark contrasts. So everyone knows I drink water or I drink different drinks when I'm drinking. But the only people who know me know I like it freezing cold. That's my nature and that's my way. But I don't go telling that to people. Hey, I like my stuff freezing cold. People who are with me know, oh, man, he likes his stuff freezing cold. That's my nature and my way. Everyone can gather the fact that I like water and I like Celsius and I like juices and all that stuff. But only someone who knows my nature, my character, my ways understands, no, man, he likes it freezing cold for a reason. You see, so God's ways are different than what's just written, not different, like co contrary, but meaning what's beyond what's written is how you truly know a person. So I, t I tell people, don't tell me about what's written. Tell me what's not written. Don't tell me. Remember, what's hidden is never written. What's hidden is never written. The moment someone starts jumping right to this, I already know you limited. This will never contradict what he's given me about himself. Does that make sense? Yes. Amen. I said, ooh, we. Hey, hey, preach boy. Oh, we moved. My mama didn't gave me a thumbs up. I know we moving. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I told y'all what she said when Felicia, she's like, yeah, what you doing? That's cute. But when my girl preach, when Felicia preach, because me and my girlfriends, we like when Felicia preach. I said, amen, mom. Amen. She, she said, yeah, son. I was talking to my girlfriends the other day. And what you doing? That's cute. That's cute, but me and my girls was talking. We said, when, Fel when that Felicia preaching? You know, old folk, when that. <laughs> when that Felicia preaching? I said, where do you think she learned it from? Huh? Huh? Hey, who you think taught her? <laughs> when that Felicia preaching? I don't know, mama. You keep asking me. She might not preach for a while. <laughs> I'm going to need you to build me up some, too. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So I thank you for your love in the chat. My spirit has been lifted. Amen. <laughs> ah. 
Shamala Hamala. <laughs> now he says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out of fine pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to kill, steal, and destroy. I am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Yes. So the life that you live, Jesus came for you not to live it in a substandard. Mm -hmm. He came that you may live it and live it in abundance. Yes, okay? So the life that Jesus died and bled and poured out for you and me so that we would have the fullness of his life inside of us. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catches them and scattereth the sheep. All right, John, this is what I want you to do. I'm going to look for, I'm looking, I'm going to look for the scripture real quick. Get me a uh, read 13 through... So, John, read me 13 through the, uh, all the way to that other part where he says that um, 13 through 18. And then I'll, I'll pick back up. Please. The harling flees because he is a harling. <laughs> And does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. And I know my sheep. So when he says the hireling flees, the hireling is someone that's paid for wages. They provide their service based upon compensation. That's why I said I don't get involved with money like that because no one can pay me to do what I'm doing. I'm not a hireling. Right? I'm willing to receive on behalf of God, but I'm not a hireling. I can't be bought. So the moment money is the topic of conversation, no conversation. Amen. Amen. We didn't go to school to study to do this. We were sent by God to do this. Yes. Amen. Amen. Excellent. All right, go ahead. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and I am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also. I okay, hold on, hold on. So God, he's telling you there's sheep that are not of this fold that he has also. You think you got the block on Christianity. You need to chill out for a second. He said there's other sheep who are not that I have who are not a part of this fold. There are other sheep that I have who are not a part of this fold. But you think if they don't prophesy like you, they're not a part of the fold. So when the man got said, can I prophesy? Now you're mad. You think he's not a part of the fold. The problem is you don't know the shepherd. That's the problem. Not the way one ministers. You're the problem. You don't know the shepherd because he tells you there are other sheep that I have who are not a part of this fold. And my plan is to bring them in that we may all be one. What is the whole thing? Remember, one body. The sheep don't get to determine who's part of the body. The shepherd does. We're too busy thinking, listen, a bad shepherd is dictated by his sheep. A good shepherd leads his sheep. Ooh. Nobody dictates to me yeah. what's, what's, nobody dictates to me what gets preached. Come on. Nobody. Why? Because I'm a servant. What's given to me, I give to his people. Yes. No one tells me, oh, you should preach this or you should teach this. You don't have a right. I'm a servant. He brings it to, he says, this is what you bring to table one. Got it. School of life. Boom. <laughs> you see you, you see it's pastors they you know why i don't spend all week preparing to preach because i'm a servant all the chef got to do is cook it and i bring it to the table i'm giving you a key of how to walk with god i don't have to prepare to preach i'm a servant bring it to me got it here you go Oh, they need prophecy. Got it. Oh, they need deliverance. Got it. Oh, they need healing. Got it. Oh, they need miracles. Got it. Oh, they need their eyes open. Got it. All he does is puts it in my hand and I give it to his people. Come on. You see? Yes. But when you're a professional, when you're a hireling, you got to study and you got to prepare. No, study is good. Yeah. Study to show that ourselves approval, right? A workman rightfully dividing the word truth. So I'm not saying don't study, but my study is so that 
I can grow with God. Yes. Not so I can serve his people. Study of the word doesn't make you effective in the spirit. No, study of the word is what is required of one who serves God, but is not the prerequisite to serve God. Yes. All of these men did not have scriptures, yet they were serving God. So I tell you all the time, hey, don't get hung up if I taught something wrong. Get hung up in what I can do. Come on. I tell you, oh, well, you said this. Okay, great. And I was wrong. Now what? Come on. <laughs> Did the age leave the person? Yes or no? What are we talking about? Did the cancer leave the person? Yes or no? What are we discussing? Can the person now prophesy? Yes or no? What are we talking about? Did the devil start falling out, shaking, foaming, running, and leaving the people? Yes. What are we having a discussion about? Semantics. Semantics. Shamala hamala. <laughs> Kevin said, he said, I perceive that these are unlearned men. You see what I'm saying? Come on, somebody. Go ahead, John. And other sheep I have. Well, let me go. Let's go back. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Yes. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. So God has already predestined who is his sheep. Whom he foreknew, he predest whom he predestined, he foreknew. Yes. Jesus is telling you, hey, me, I have other sheep that are not a part of you, and I have to get them and I have to bring them, and they have to hear me too, so that we may be one. Mm. It's right there. Mm. Whom he foreknew, he predestined. Yes. Jeremiah. Before you were formed, while before you were formed inside of your mother's womb, I knew you. I foreknew you and I ordained you yes. to be a prophet to the nations. Yes. He already knew what he would do before he even called him into this realm. He had history with God. He had history with God. I tell you a lot of times, if you want to be a true spiritual man, you pray prayers like, Father, help me get caught up in time with you. Because I've always known you and you've always known me. That's how you pray. You've always known me because I proceeded from you. The spirit that you gave me is eternal. Awaken that which is on the inside of me that helps me to know. I'm glad to be in the house. Amen. Everybody good? YouTube, y'all good? Shamala Hamala. What'd you say? Oh, oh, my son would tell me flip it. I'm... Well, we successfully failed at that mission today, John. <laughs> and the other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Remember this, sheep don't get to determine who's a part of the fold, the shepherd does. Amen. Yes. Amen. Sheep don't lead the shepherd, the shepherd leads the sheep. Yes. Nobody gets to tell me what we, people are like, oh, we should teach this, maybe. Oh. When are you going to teach this? Probably never now that you're asking. <laughs> the shepherd leads the sheep, not the other way around. Yes. My mom asked me that, she said, Which, uh, when are you going to prepare? Never. My crutch is my dependence that God will always come. Yes. My crutch, God gave that to me. Like Paul said, I have a thorn in my side that I ask him to. I ask God, man, make me better. No, the Lord says, this is how you would do this. My crutch is my dependence that God will always be with me. Yes. Now, I'm not saying be like me, but you should maybe want to be like me. Just saying. <laughs> it's Wendy's four for four up in here, straight, straight nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> what I tell you, pull, my mom pull up this thing, full, full, strawberry lemonade, barbecue sauce. Mm. <laughs> that's how, 
That, that's how my mama pull up at Wendy's. Hi, can I take your four for four strawberry lemonade barbecue sauce? Mm. <laughs> we already know what we're here for. <laughs> verse, verse 17. Therefore doth my father love me, because I lay down my life that I, that I might take it again. So remember, Jesus didn't die. He gave up his life. Yes. No one could kill him. He gave up his life. The result was the death, but he was the one that determined it. Yes. It says, indeed, he yielded his spirit. Amen. Amen. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down on myself. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it again. This commandment I have I received of my father. There was division, therefore, again, among the Jews of these sayings. Remember, the sayings of God will always have the religious leaders in uproar. Mm. The sayings of God, when I say, hey, you can't earn anything from God, and they get in the uproar, they're showing you where their nature is. They're showing you their pedigree, and they're showing you their heritage. Mm. When I tell you we have a heritage of the saints that's in light, they're showing you they have a heritage of those who were not saints. Mm. That's why they have a hard time processing God's sayings. There was a division, therefore, again, among the Jews for these things. And many of them said, he hath the devil and is mad. Why hear ye him? Others said, these are not the words of him that have a devil. Can a devil open blind eyes? So they're telling you right here. It's impossible for a man to have a devil yet be able to do these things. It's impossible for a man to be able to do these things and be able to do these works. That's why I tell people, don't get hung up on what I say. Get hung up on what I do. What I do will verify who's with me, not what I said. Yes. Remember, the kingdom of God is not in talk, but in power and demonstrating. Yes. Okay? The kingdom of God is not in talk. It's in power and in demonstrating. And where's the power line? On the inside of me. Yes. And I lose that power from the inside. Why? Because the kingdom is here, not there. That's what Jesus says. Don't be don't be fooled and don't be deceived when people say the kingdom is here. The kingdom is there. The kingdom is there. The kingdom is here. He says, no, before the kingdom is within you. You see? Yes. So the kingdom is not in talk and in debates and in sayings. It's in power and in demonstrating it. So I don't get hung up. Oh, you said this or you taught this wrong. OK, well, what did I follow it up with? Right. What did I follow it up with? There was a teaching one time. I don't remember what the teaching was, but I was talking about something. And one of the girls says something in the chat and I corrected her and I, I didn't rebuke her, but I I gave her enough correction, a mild correction. Let's say that a mild rebuke. And I knew what I was doing. I said, if she takes this, this will open a door for her. This is what I said. If she takes this, this will open a door for her. That same night, she takes it and she goes to sleep and she goes into prayer. She goes into worship. And as that's happening, she wakes up. And there's gold dust everywhere all over her. Yes. Gold dust everywhere. She's never seen it. She's never had access into that realm yet. And then she goes to the bathroom because she can't believe it. Washes it all off. I'm like, what is wrong with you? You should have been scraping that, trying to get it together and sell it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, you'll need to take the monitor, take the HDMI and plug it into your monitor, yes. the big one, but don't cut the tower on because it'll make noise. You understand what I'm saying? Cut the, cut the monitor on and then run the HDMI to that so you can see everything in there. Y'all give me a second, we're working it out. Yeah, no, no, I, I know that's good, but that way he can know what he's switching to and, and, that, and that sort of deal. We just having those, those small technical um, things we're fixing real fast. But no, so then she wakes up after this, all of this gold dust everywhere. And then she goes into her a bathroom. She starts to wash herself off. All of it's gone. And I'm like, don't worry. You're going to lay back down. And it's going to be on you again. Then when she lays down, 
all of it comes back on her again. She was opened into another realm. That's because man also becomes a door. Remember I said I'm in his name. When I speak, it ain't me speaking. You see? So you can find a man, and if a man is an authorized representative, he becomes a door also. You see? I'm waiting for the right time to do it, and I'm thinking probably soon we're going to have a beating, and what's going to happen is gold dust going to fall on everybody. People are going to cry, and oil will come from out of their tears. I'm going to teach, like, one, one of the graces of the prophet is the glory realm. I will teach you what the glory realm truly is. People will cry to when I'm telling you things like, guys, love him genuinely, love him sincerely. I'm trying to drop clues to you of what's possible. I'm trying to drop clues to you of what can happen for the man who truly loves him. What can happen for the man who just truly wants him and only for him and nothing else. I'm trying to drop hints to you, but I will start teaching this. God gives me the grace to do it. People will cry tears in some of the meetings that are coming up and we will find a vein in worship and people will wipe their tears and there will be oil on their face. I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you what I know. I'm not. People ain't even heard about. You. That's why you're like, mm. why? Because it ain't even the thing that you fathomed yet. The reason you ain't fathomed because nobody made you aware of the signpost that exists. Mm-hmm. Only a man who's been there can make you aware of it. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm telling you. So what happened was gold dust everywhere, 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 everywhere. Now. That same person. Mute this real fast.
Perfect. Thank you guys for your patience. I was just saying something really fast. Now, when we go, I was talking about the glory realm though, and all things. The when God begin, when God came to me and began to teach me the things, He. That's why, he, I I wish I could just go there. Like, my mind just goes a million places just thinking about all of those lessons that I learned early on. But I remember two simple things. Inside of this realm, everything can bend, everything can stretch, everything can move. The building blocks of all things that are complex are first found in simplicity. The same way you put together, you have a, what's the chart that you have with all the different stuff? Like hydrogen and all of the, the periodic table. That's the way he explained it to me in, in, a, in a unique, vast form inside of the water spirits. This right here works with this, and this is how you make this. Inside of this realm, everything can stretch. Inside of this realm, things can dissolve and reappear. That's how I learned about miracles. All of those things. That's why inside of that place. Inside of that place. So I said, but I said it to say, though, don't get caught up in what people say. Get caught up in what they can do. There's too much talking nowadays. Too much talking and not enough demonstrating. So even when all the talks come, I say, hey, man, if somebody say, oh, what is this they, they said this. Oh, wait, man, what have you done lately? <laughs> and then it gets real quiet. Oh, no, no, no. I get it. I get it. What have you done? What are you doing? If you're not doing anything, stop talking. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Excellent. He hath the devil and is mad. You hear ye him. Why hear ye him? Others said, these are not the words of him that have a devil. Can a devil open eyes of the blind? And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said to them, how long does thou make us doubt if thou be the Christ? Tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you believe not the work. Excuse me. Jesus answered them, I told you. And ye believe not the works that I do in my father's name. They bear witness of me. So he says, how long are you going to talk to us and make us doubt? When are you going to tell us plainly? Jesus said, I told you when I did the works that I was doing. That's why I said, I don't get caught up in what people say. I watch what they can do because their works testify. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't say he spoke. He said, my works spoke. Yes. Read it again. Jesus answered them. I told you, comma, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my father's name, they bear witness of me. A witness has to see and has to have the ability to speak. Mm -hmm. yes. When you call a wit, we will call the next witness to the stand. Why? Because they were there, they saw it, and they can give an account for it. Yes. He says, when will you speak to us plainly? He said, I spoke to you plainly when I did the works. That's why I said, I don't get hung up in, well, Jason, well, you know, you can't talk about this and you say this and this. No, man, my works speak for me and your works should speak for you. Everyone typed in the chat this year. My works will speak for me, but don't have to say this year. My works will speak for me. Yes. Hey, give me a chance to drink some juice while y'all typing that. My works will speak for me. That's the energy we on this year. My works will speak for me. So, yes, Jesus says, I am the door. He says, our works are rank of an angel. No. Mm -mm. Come on, mom. My mom said, my works will speak for me. Yeah. <laughs> full, full, strawberry, lemonade, barbecue sauce. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> 
Nu știi, bes. I said, hey, woman of God. <laughs> Now he says, I am the door. If any man comes in any other way, he is a thief and a robber. Remember, access to the spiritual realm can be accessed separate from God. What we're looking for is to come through the door, which is his son, which is, excuse me, his son. We come in through him. We don't come in through astral projection and through new age practice and all these other things because these are true things that exist. We come. We come in through his son. Amen. Amen. Now, when we talk about the door, the next door that you have is the door of your spirit, the door of your vessel or the door of yourself. Okay. The door of yourself represents access into your heart, access into your own heart. So every man has a door that he cannot see. And when he opens that door, this is what gives man access to him. Now, a lot of us have doors that are wide open and we're just clueless about it. A lot of us have doors that are wide open and we're clueless about it. That's why people can just fall foolishly in love half the time. Their heart's just wide open because their door's wide open. Wow. It's spiritual. It's spiritual. And people fall foolishly in love because they don't have anyone around them to secure their door. So I am a captain of the door of the women who are around me. So Pastor Julie, nobody gets to her without coming through me. Why? Because I'm the one who determines whether her door is open or closed. We don't like that kind of talk. But this is how women get pre. This is how women end up sleeping with other dudes before they're married. They don't have another man standing guarding their door. Think about it. If they had to pass through me to get to her, ain't no panties dropping. <laughs> it's real, but it's biblical. It's real, but it's biblical. Go, give me the song of songs. What, what would Gino just said? Come, it's in the book. <laughs> it's in the book. Let's go to work, John. <laughs> towards the end of the song of songs, towards the eighth chapter, I want you to look for that. And it says, what shall we do in the day where our little sister needs to be spoken for? You think I'm talking? I'm, I'm spitting straight scripture to you. And you have to also, the flip side is, that woman has to allow someone to stand and guard her door. That's the flip side. She allows me that space to do that. That's the flip side to it. Somebody has to, you have to allow someone the space to stand guard on your behalf and the space to speak on your behalf. That's what song says. What shall we do in the day while little sister shall be spoken for? We will build walls of cedar around her. Yes. You found it? Yes. What, which one is, was it? Uh, Song of Psalm 8. See? Uh, we're gonna, uh, that was in there. You always there. Mm -hmm. I'll I be somewhere. I'll be a verse before, verse after, chapter before, verse after, but I'm there. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 8. We have a little sister. And she has no breasts. We have a little sister and she has no breasts. When it talks about breasts, she's not at the place that she can make decisions on her own yet. Mm -hmm. She's not at the place where she's developed to produce things on her own yet. Yet she's beginning to grow. Mm -hmm. She's beginning to grow. Mm -hmm. The breasts represent a symbol of stature of growth. Mm -hmm. Not just you just matured like in physical time, but means a stature of growth. That same woman. That same one that they're talking about, when you read the beginning of Song of Song, says she had breasts that were like raisins. Mm -hmm. Then when you look in the middle, it talks about she having breasts like the clusters of grapes. Then you continue on she having breasts like pomegranates. She having breasts like a big old palm tree. That's what it says. It's talking about how she grew from a place of existence into a place of nourishment, into a place of satisfaction that she can, can give nourishment to others, but she can also satisfy. Yeah. That's why the scripture says, be satisfied with the breast of the wife of your youth. Why? Because at a certain point, you find satisfaction in this person. Yes. You see? Go ahead. We have a little sister. And she you see that? Been. We have a little sister. Yes. We have a little sister. 
The problem is there aren't enough people saying we have someone that we're accountable to speak for. We have someone we're accountable to speak for. I, all the boyfriend, girlfriend stuff. I'm like, how you, how you slide in there? There was nobody there to speak for. The we was missing. No one will ever get access to Elior without coming through me, Jalen, and Elijah. And everyone else that's present. I've already convinced my daughter, listen, this is, what we're gonna, this is the plan of God for your life. You're going to create this fashion line. You're going to be very wealthy. And me and you are going to travel the world and do the work of God together. And they're right. We've talked about it. You will be so wealthy because we're going to need that money to not worry about all these raggedy niggas. <laughs> you understand? I said, now your brothers, I said, because they're going to want you to take their name. But baby, I gave you my name. All right. Carl going to be right there with him. What? We have a little sister yes. that has to be spoken for. It's funny, but if more people could ride around there, we'd have better marriages and we have less premature sex, premarital sex. I said, this is the plan of God for your life. We're going to build this fashion line. You will be like the Alexander McQueen, all of these things. You're going to be in Neiman Marcus. You're going to be in all these places. Elior Rain. I named you that way so you can never have to worry about taking anyone else's name. Yes. Amen. I named you so your name would carry weight on its own. Mm -hmm. Anyone, if they get to marry her, she's the catch, not them. Right. She's the catch, not them. We have a little sister who has to be spoken for. <laughs> yes. Hey, man. Go ahead. Now go ahead and read it. <laughs> we have a little sister, and she has no breasts. Mm -hmm. What shall we do for our sister in the day when she is spoken for? If she is a wall, we will build upon her. A battlement of silver, and if she is a door, we will enclose her with boards of cedar. If she is a door, if she is open, we will build around her and encase her in. Mm. So even if her heart is ready and it isn't time, it doesn't matter because we're going to close her up. Mm. Cedar strong wood. That's what the cedar represents. That which is of strength, of substance, of value. We will build her around her even if her own door is open because it's not yet time. Mm -hmm. You understand? What shall we do in the day where our little sister shall be spoken for? You're not in place to speak for people because you don't care that much. You don't care that much. Now back to the door. The door. All right. Get off my soapbox because <laughs> then actually I'm rebuking my daughter about boys. <laughs> I, st I tell my daughter, me and you together forever. Don't I? Don't I, Leo? Me and I'm in. You see a uh, water boy? My mama said, my mama said, my mama said, my mama said, uh, alligators smile because the, the, the rays of the sunshine. Well, your mama is a fool. <laughs> they gonna be saying about your daddy is a fool. I said, me and you together forever. Me, I, I said, uh, f my wife don't even know I say that. Me and you together forever. Me and you together forever. Why? I am voiding her in. Yes. When she becomes a wall, I will build upon her. But right now, she's a door. I'm encasing her in. There's your premarital lesson, just one on one. We'll save a lot of things if we start building doors or if we start building walls around these doors. Amen. Amen. Excellent. Now, God says it like this. The door is the access point to a man. The door is the access point to a man. So because the door is the access point to a man, we have to be aware that that is the other door. That's why he says. Uh, was that Genesis 6, 7 when he's talking to Cain and he says, Cain, don't you know if you do well, it will be accepted. Don't you know if you do right, it will be accepted. And he says, but sin 
is knocking at your door and its desire is to take over you. Yes. Its desire is to rule you. So at the very door of your entryway, of your spirit, there is opposition sometimes that you're not even aware of. Cain couldn't see it, but God could. Cain, I want you to be mindful. Sin is present and is knocking at your door. Its desire is to take over you. Its desire is to rule you. Find it for me, John. Genesis 4, start verse 3. And in the present of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the, fir- of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Mm-hmm. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering. But he did not respect Cain. And check your phone. And his offering. Thank you. And Cain was very angry. And his countenance fell, fell. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? Mm-hmm. If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. So sin lies at the door and it has a desire for you. So sin isn't something that you do. Sin is something that's present around you that causes you to do something. Mm. He says sin is at your door and its desire is to rule over you. Its desire is to overtake you. Do not let it rule you. But we've been taught that sin is just, oh, you're doing something. Sin is the presence and an entity, a, a essence that makes you do certain things. Sin is an essence that makes you commit certain acts, that makes you say certain things, that makes you do certain things. But the only way it can happen is if it enters in your door. Mm. That's the way it happens, because if it enters your door, now it can persuade you. Now it can guide you. Now it can have rule over you. God wasn't even mad about his sacrifice because it wasn't a sin. It just wasn't what he was accepting. But it led him to now this thing is ready to take over you. You see? So the door of every man's heart, there are all kinds of things around. And this is why we have to safeguard it. This is why we have to safeguard it. Jesus said that, behold, I stand and I knock at the door. Find it for me. Behold, I stand just so we we don't have to read it, but just so we could put it up there. He says, behold, I stand and I knock at the door. If anyone opens, my father and I will come in and we will have sup with him or we will make, we will have dine with him or we will begin to dine with him. Yes. F- find it for me. So I, I know I'm paraphrasing it so I can, so I can say it correctly. YouTube, y'all still with me? Let me see some thumbs up in the chat. I want to make sure y'all still with me. It should be Revelation three, fifteen or Revelation three. See how see what I say? I'm always be in the like when they hit the putt. <laughs> I'm gonna be somewhere in that area. <laughs> What'd you say, sweetie? All up in that vicinity. I won't be in the vicinity. You got it, John. Revelation three twenty. Yeah. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him. So he says, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears and opens, I will come in with him. Now, the question is, do you have the capacity to hear him? Because you're looking for fellowship with him, but a lot of times he's knocking and you don't hear it. Can you hear him is the question. He says, behold, I stand and I knock. If anyone hears, I will come in. And keep reading. I will come into him. I will come into him. This is a level of intimacy. 
when I say that Holy Spirit is in me, working with me and through me. Jesus is telling you here that I will come into him. Go ahead. And dine with him. And he with me. Keep going. Keep going. I'm sorry. I'm texting someone. <laughs> to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Perfect. So he says, I will come in and I will dine with him and my father. We will have fellowship with him. What this is, one of the things that this is saying is that I stand and I knock at your door. When I come in, I am now the master of the ceremony. When it talks about, sir, he says, I will what? I will dine with you. Right. Yes. If you got pork and bean type fellowship with God, it's because you haven't held the master to charge. He's the master of the ceremony. He says, when I come in, I will dine with you. God's not like us. We might tell you about knowing God's ways, his nature. Mm -hmm. If I if you knock on my door, I bring you in and I feed you. Yes. It's the other way around with God. If you open the door to him, he comes and he rearranges everything, makes everything appear and begins to serve you. That's what it's talking about. What I will come in and I will fellowship with him. I will dine with him. He's saying, if you open to me, I will now take the place as the master of the ceremony here. Wow. When you talk about spiritual food, I have to teach you that again because there's a whole different side of spiritual food that I haven't even taught you about. And all of it starts with him coming in the door. All of it starts with him coming in the door. When he comes in the door, he literally changes positions with you. He becomes the master of the sin. He says, you have a seat. Let us serve you. That's why I said most people don't know how to hold him to charge because they didn't know he's the master of the ceremony. I'm just giving you a signpost and making you aware that if you hear him knock, when he comes in, he's taken over. And when he takes over, it's an immediate, an immediate upgrade. It's from full for full barbecue sauce to Ritz Carlton like that. Because why? He becomes the master of the ceremony. Remember, these vessels are leaked. If there's something wrong with it, it's his job to fix it. That's how I approach God when I need something in my body. This is his vessel. Let me put in a maintenance request. You understand? Yes. So behold, I stand and I knock at the door. If any man opens, I will come in and my father will come with me. It's a package deal. If you get the son, you get the father. But there is no father without the son. You see that? If you get the son, you get the father. But there is no father without the son. It's a package deal. But when he comes in, he becomes the captain of the banquet. He becomes the master of the ceremony. This is where he begins to rearrange the inside of a man. Say, man, I don't look for a change on the outside. I look for a change on the inside. From the inside to without is how we say it. We're looking for a change from here to without. Does that make sense? So behold, I stand, I knock at the door. Then he tells Cain, Cain, sin is knocking at your door. Then he said that if she is a door, we will build for her. So doors are access points into our own spirits. Does that make sense? Yes. It's an access point. And now you know, Father, I open the door of my heart to you. Father, I open the door of my heart to you that you may come in and be with me. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, this is what I want to do. We're going to take a break. That way I can use the restroom. I want us to give, give with intention, give prayerfully. Give intentionally. This is something that we're doing unto God. Amen. There's something that we're doing unto God. It's not by happenstance. If you ever feel a little slight rumble in your stomach and your chest, keep your money and go get it full for full. Okay? Because God doesn't want it the moment. That's there. That's attached to it. And I don't want to be anything attached to it either. Amen. But for those who hearts are to put themselves into God's kingdom and to tie themselves into it. I want you to do it with intention. I want you to do it with prayer. That just as I am doing this, Father, I may hear you knock at my heart. Just as I am doing or my door. Just as I am doing this, Father, may you become the banquet or the captain of my banquet. May you become the master of my ceremony. And then when we come back, we're going to talk about spiritual doors. Amen? Amen. Excellent. So we got to do the natural side, and then we'll do the spiritual side. Amen? Amen. All right, God bless you.
God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad. I'm the right one with some. All I'm showing you is there's a greater Jerusalem. That's all I'm saying. There's a heavenly Jerusalem. There's a spiritual Jerusalem. That Jerusalem is where you find the interaction. Because there is where the saints are. There is where the angels are. There is where the city of God is. The mountain of God hosts the city of God. The city of God is where the infrastructure is. There is the place that you receive impartation. There is the place where you, every calling that I've got, i got it in Zion. Because that's where the city is. You have to go to the capital city to get his resources. You don't get to call from from the outside. You understand? You understand? That's how men is called. Men is called in Zion, not by other men. By the time I call someone, I'm an authorized representative because I've been to Zion. So because I've been there, I carry it with me everywhere I go. Hey, God is lifting you. Bob. But if you ain't been there, you're not qualified to lift anybody. This is how we get apostles, prophets, evangelists, past teachers. That's how I got my next grace that said, hey, now your job is to go raise prophets, apostles, and spiritual men. I was in Zion when he gave me to do that. At least you like, help him. Life is a test when you pass, yeah. School of Meditation, Washington, D.C., May 31st, June 1st. You are not going to want to miss this. There is a portion that God has left for every one of his children inside of meditation. We see this from the life of our father Abraham all the way through the life of our beautiful Lord Jesus, even the saints after, which means that there's a portion of interaction with the Lord Jesus that we can have through meditation. There's a portion of fellowship that we have with sweet Holy Spirit through meditation. There's a portion of interacting with the Father and even receiving answers to prayer through meditation. He says through the Word of God that before you call, I will answer, which means that when meditation is done properly, prayers aren't only placed in your mouth, but they're placed in your heart. That's why David said, let the meditations of my heart be acceptable. We're going to be debunking all of the new age garbage that every child of God could move in this vein of interacting with him. Like John said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. And I heard a vision. What do you think he was doing? Meditating. If you know what I know, school of meditation, May 31st, June 1st. Raising my hands on class. Life is a test where you pass. God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that. I'ma spend one gift too bad. I'm the right one with some lights and hold me up. I do not care. I remember care. one morning, something detrimental happened to us. And the next morning, I was going through like the, 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 the what I call the stages of grievance. And one of them is anger, and I felt it the next morning. I was angry. I woke up, and I was pissed. I thought I was fine the night before. I didn't cry a little bit. And then the next morning, I woke up, and I was angry. And my husband, thank God for my husband, he said, you have to go and pray now. Get up and go pray. And I went, and I was like, I just, ah, what you mean I can't pray? I felt bad that I felt anger. And he was like, no, you have to go pray now. And I was like, okay. I get up, and I go pray, and I'm telling you. I bared my heart before the Lord. And it was almost like being vulnerable about that pain, about the anger, about my feelings before the Lord brought us into another place of intimacy. And my tears, like the Lord, became as something that spoke before him. It says that his tears became blood. Why? Because his blood speaks a better word. So your tears that comes down out of these places of pain becomes begins to speak and they bottle it and then they pour it onto the pages of the books in heaven and they become a written epistle before the Lord. Lord, teach me how to pray. So don't hold back your tears. Don't hold back your feelings. 
You pray, and then it becomes painful, and you pray more earnestly before the Lord. Lord, this temptation is too much for me. I thought I could handle it. I thought I can do this in my own righteousness, but I am failing. Help me, Lord. I sing, I like to talk my gifts together. They call rap. Raising my hands up in class. Life is a test when you pass. God knows when I get there. School of Meditation, Washington, D.C. May 31st, June 1st. You are not going to want to miss this. There is a portion that God has left for every one of his children inside of meditation. We see this from the life of our father Abraham all the way through the life of our beautiful Lord Jesus, even the saints after, which means that there's a portion of interaction with the Lord Jesus that we can have through meditation. There's a portion of fellowship that we have with sweet Holy Spirit through meditation. There's a portion of interacting with the Father and even receiving answers to prayer through meditation. He says through the word of God that before you call, I will answer, which means that when meditation is done properly, prayers aren't only placed in your mouth, but they're placed in your heart. That's why David said, let the meditations of my heart be acceptable. We're going to be debunking all of the new age garbage that every child of God could move in this vein of interacting with him. Like John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard a vision. What do you think he was doing? Meditating. If you know what I know, school of meditation, May 31st, June 1st. Raising my hands up class. Life is a test when you pass. God knows when I get that, I'm going to flip that. I'm going to spend one gift too bad. I'm the right one with some light sun. Hold me up, I do not care. I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together. He, he, he was revealed to, or the measure of light that Paul was revealed to, had a physical expression on him. It blinded him. We know it because when Jesus returns, he will fully vent the full manifestation of his light, and it will destroy everyone who hates him. So they think he's coming back with like charge, kind of. All right, perfect. We back, we back, we back, we back. If you can hear as well, put a thumbs up in the chat. Nothing should have changed, but make sure everybody's still here and we can, we can get going with God's grace. <clears throat> yeah, put some doors in the chat. No, I know you're still with us. Let's uh, let's get rocking so we can get everybody get, get the babies to bed. I know y'all tired. <laughs> y'all know y'all be struggling. <laughs> God build our capacity. It's the grace of God, man. I can stand for hours and do what God gave me to do. I can stand for hours. I can stand as long longer than what someone's capacity is because it's the grace of God. The moment you had to strive in your own strength, that's when you got a question that God called me to do this. The moment you got to strive in your own strength, that's when you got to ask the question that God truly called me to do this. I can do this every day until the return of our Lord Jesus. I actually... I told someone, I said, I would love to teach every single day in the morning and in the evening. Mm -hmm. I would love to pray in the morning, teach at night. I would love to. But it takes time to raise the spiritual people. Mm -hmm. It takes a long time. To, that's why people ask, how do I do this? How do I do this? 
Trust me, it takes a long time to raise a spiritual man. It takes a long time. If someone can't sit under the teacher, what makes you think they can sit and still to wait on God to come? One day I will teach you the lessons of how you can actually access it. And I'm telling you, most people aren't willing to pay the price. But that's not what we're talking about tonight. But <laughs> I said to say, I'm going to, uh, wherever we land when this is done, we're going to cut it. Felicia said, y'all, oh, for that we praise him. <laughs> <laughs> but no, John, I want you to give me revelation where he says, and I saw a door above me in the spirit. <clears throat> Is it Revelation five? I'm trying to I'm trying to read it in my head to remember where it's at. But John made an interesting statement. It says that I John was in <laughs> my mom said, I don't see no doors. We know my mommy got number that pink can and we here for it. <laughs> Anytime we see that, she said, child, all I got is this pecan. You be talking about emojis. I don't know where they at. That's what she told me. <laughs> I said, when we together, I will show you. And the grandkids will show you, and we, we'll upgrade your social media game. <laughs> but no, John says something when he started in the beginning. He says, I, John, was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I was on the Isle of Patmos for the testimony of Jesus. This is where he was facing persecution. His persecution was that they placed him separate from everybody. So even then, those who opposed God, which were influenced by evil spirits, knew a form of persecution is detaching people away from the body of Christ. That's why I said, if someone didn't make someone a loner, don't try to be one. And trust me, we all know if you made to be that way or not. There's certain things where we know, okay, this, this is just that. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because John suffered persecution and the way they persecute was we're going to separate you from everybody. But then the dynamic is they also like watch many didn't understand that the bounds of communication is not limited by the flesh. Amen. Mm -hmm. He says, John, write this to the angels of the church. Write this to this church. Write this to this church. Write this to that church. What do you think you're doing? Dropping it in the water and like hope this lands there? You see? Well, These are spiritual things. Go ahead. Please. I'm going to make sure it's one you want, though. Okay. Uh, it says Revelation 4, starting verse 1. Well, I was thinking 5, so we're probably close. Because that means, you know, I'm normally close to it. After these things, I look, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. So now he says, after these things, I looked, and I saw a door standing open in heaven I saw a door standing doors don't stand doors are hinged when you read the Proverbs and you read the Psalms every account of physical doors talks about how they're hinged doors don't stand they're hinged so when he says I John saw a door standing this is an access point. But this access point, remember I said doors represent transition from one dimension into the next. John was already caught up into visions of God. This is chapter four, chapter five. John is already caught up in the beginning. I, John, was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard a voice behind me saying, come up here. John was already caught up from the beginning of the writing. From the beginning of the writing, John is already in heaven, but he's in heaven in a certain dimension. He's in heaven in a certain realm. He's in heaven in a certain layer. Remember, heaven is in layers or dimensions of light. Heaven is in layers or dimensions of light. It's actually, we will all see one day, but there are certain portions of heaven where it's not called heaven there. Heaven is the word that is used to describe it here. You understand? Heaven is the word that is used to describe it within our world and within our realm. But heaven there, anyone who's experienced it will tell you heaven is not quite called heaven. Although you will hear the word heaven as a reference point. Excuse me. Because heaven is what we understand. 
So there's some things that our understanding, we retain some of our understanding is washed away when we move into that realm. But heaven is not truly called heaven. Heaven is about layers or dimensions of light. Heaven is literally about layers or dimensions of light. The way the Lord taught me that was that when I was ascended and he lifted me into heaven and the angels that carried me there, I was only allowed access into a certain layer or a certain realm or a certain dimension. And I was inside of this certain dimension of light and I wasn't permitted to go higher. But me, I was caught up high into the heavens. But there were certain dimensions that he would not grant me access to because it was not yet time. There were angels who were there teaching me. You see this here? This is what we do here. This is what we call this. This is this. And then the layer of light opened into another layer, and that's where the Lord Jesus came to meet me. And that's when he sent me back and says, when the time's prepared, I will bring you back. It's layers of light. It's dimensions of light. That's why I learned that people dwell in different realms, and the individuals in higher realms and lower realms can interact but there has to be a process that merges the light together so they can dwell together. This is how I learned about doors. Because a door was standing open for me and it wasn't a door, it was an angelic being. It was an angelic being, but it was a door. John is telling you what's happening. I, John, was caught up in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard a voice behind me saying, come up here, come up higher. Now you're getting the, a greater picture of what I'm telling you even with my own encounter how heaven is in layers and it's, it's in realms it's in dimensions he says it that and then I looked and I saw a door standing open this is an access point that an angel has given him access into does this make sense mm -hmm. remember spiritual things are hard to teach because you can't frame it with your natural understanding you have to teach it with your natural understanding because there's no other way to liken it unto something. Mm -hmm. That's why the entire description is like, he is like this. He is like that. He is likened unto one who has feet burnished, burnt, burnished in bronze and brass. Mm -hmm. He is one who has hair like wool, mm -hmm. right? But even then, so people mix it up and they think, oh, Jesus has an afro because it says his hair is like wool. <laughs> That's not what it's saying. It's like, but that just goes to show you people don't need, forget experiencing heaven. All you got to do is simply read. It says his face and his hair is white like wool. There's that Hebrew Israelite. That just shows you the realm of stupidity that religion can put you in. <clears throat> that just show you the realm of stupidity that it can put you in. That he's telling you that. It's likened unto this. It's not that it is this. <clears throat> but even if it was that, he's telling you, even his face was white like wool. So that discounts him being a black man. Brother. <laughs> Amen. Y'all put some y'all put some black power fist in there for the Hebrew for the Hebrew Israelites one time so they're not butthurt. <laughs> Let me get one. Hold on. Fight the power. They don't have one of the fists like this. So he says, I see that door above me, right? Now, when you go to Psalms, John, I want you to give me Psalms when it talks about, I think it's, it's Psalms 19 and Psalms 24. Don't hold me to it, but. Yeah, I'm about to come down that street in a second. Quentin, I'm coming. I got you. I'm coming down your street in like two seconds. All right, we gotta start picking the Hebrew lights. I was just playing. <laughs> 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 
Jacksonville's? Yep. Okay. Yeah, get that for me, please. Mm, yeah, whatever you deem, whatever you deem necessary. Psalm 24. Psalm I trust verse, your discernment. Psalm verse 1. <laughs> the earth is the Lord's and all is fullness. The world and those who dwell therein. Mm-hmm. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He... Who has clean hands and a pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul to an idol. Nor swore deceitfully. Mm-hmm. He shall receive blessing from the Lord. Mm-hmm. And righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob. The generation of those who seek him. Who seek your face. Lift up your heads. O you gates. And be lifted up. You everlasting doors <coughs> and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? So lift up your heads, O ye gates, be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall or will come in. Now when it talks about lift up your heads, O ye gates, be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, gates, doors, windows, all of these are access points or portals. This specific understanding is not that this is a physical gate that is accessed by a city limit that's how it's taught lift up your heads O ye gates be ye lift all the praise and worship these love it all right come on and lift up your-. it's like the go it's like the not one of the go-to exhortation scriptures and i'm for it but what they're truly saying is that gates are angelic beings there are angelic beings that are called gates Lift up your heads, O ye gates, be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. When the doors are lifted up, who comes in? The king of glory. One function of cherubims is that they are doors. They are cherubims that literally function as doors. Wherever the cherubims are, the presence of God is shortly behind it. That is why in the garden, he had cherubims all through the garden, because they proceed the coming of his presence. He who rides upon the wings of the cherubim. He is in between the wings of the cherubim. The whole scriptures just continually tell us that. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. There is no everlasting door. This is spiritual language David is talking about. There is no door that is everlasting. So if there is an everlasting door, this is something spiritual. Does that make sense? But I want to stick to my word because we're out of time. So what we'll do is we'll do a part two and I'll I'll come back whenever Felicia says I can. And we'll talk about everlasting doors. We'll talk about the cherubim and we'll talk about access points because all these things work together. Man becomes a door. You have angelic beings that are doors. This entire thing is a spiritual language which God has made available for his people. And I'm going to share some things about these spiritual doors that will help us go higher into his presence. Amen. Yeah. But I want to keep you to time because we started late. So I love you. I bless you. We'll do a part two. Um, this week before the week is out, though, not like next week. We'll do a part two before this week is out. The saints are hurting. They trying. Amen. All right. I love you. Y'all have a good night. God bless you. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching tonight's teaching. We hope that it was a blessing to you and that you received all that God has for you tonight. If you did enjoy your time with us, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel and share with a friend so that they can be blessed as well. We'll see you in the next live.